October 27th is when the Shadowlands will be landing. We have all our dates of when the raids will launch. Check the link down below if you want to get them confirmed. But one thing is abundantly clear. So many people are unprepared for what is about to happen. So let's jump into a few of the little things that haven't been covered in great detail. It's always the small things that don't get like a whole video, so we better put them together here. Like, there's no flight whistle. Yeah, there's no flight whistle. Of course, we're not going to have flying in the Shadowlands, and the lack of flight whistle really sucks in a lot of ways. In fact, the whole world quest system is now totally different. The way it works is there are considerably less world quests in the game. In fact, most zones will have about four per day. So if you were thinking of a BFA mindset or a Legion mindset, it doesn't work that way anymore. You do still receive the equivalent of an emissary every single day. They're now called callings. Now, what annoyance about this is you have to travel to your Covenant Sanctum to pick up the quest. If you open up the menu, it will tell you what the calling is for the day, but you won't be able to just go and complete it. These take place in either your own zone or in different zones and come in a number of different ways. Most of you are going to be used to complete four world quests in a zone, and that will get you your emissary. That is not what happens this time. They can come in a whole variety of things, such as defend Revendreth. Yes, I know, defend the other zone who don't particularly seem to want to deal with you anymore, but that is a commonplace theme. And in that case, you could do a number of things. You can go to Revendreth, complete their world quest, kill some rares in that zone, and you will have defended Revendreth. What you could also do is do any of the dungeons that are associated with Revendreth. That will count towards it too. You have your whole choice of what you want to do there. That's not always the case though. You will have other varieties such as kill four rare mobs in Bastion. And those mean that you need to collect usually some sort of flower or some sort of resource from those guys and you have to find rare mobs. Some rare mobs are easy, soloables, things you can do there. But many of them are not, which means you will be looking for groups in order to complete those quests. Other quests will involve specifically doing four world quests in a zone. You will get that variety as well. So there's a whole mishmash of these calling quests that you're going to get. Why should you do them? That's a good question. So the reason this time is to gain anima. Now anima feeds directly into your sanctum anima reservoir. What's that for? Just to upgrade the sanctum. One thing that's going to be really difficult for a lot of people to get away from is the idea that world quests and all that are not mandatory content. They're not actually tied to your player power per se. They're not something you're going to have to grind and do world quest sweeps. In fact, the likelihood is you're not going to be able to. World quests are now significantly longer than they are in Legion and BFA or any other version you've seen. You can expect to spend 15 to 20 minutes doing a single world quest. Yeah, and they're all kind of gimmicky. There are one or two go and kill X amount of things. They're there, but they're very rare. They are much rarer than you've ever seen before. This time around, most of the world quests have some sort of gimmick or story to tell you. And this means they're a bit hit and miss. I'm not being negative here. Sometimes you're going to get one that's actually kind of fun. Maybe you're going to do some jumping on clouds. Maybe you're going to be going on some sort of escort mission, something along those lines. Maybe you're going to turn into a butterfly and commit genocide. All those kinds of things. However, some of them are kind of boring. And that means because these missions are significantly longer, that if you get the ones that aren't particularly interesting, then you're kind of shit out of luck. They're going to take you a really long time and they're probably just not going to be that fun. But you don't have any choices. Whereas in BFA, you can say something like, oh, I'll choose these four quests because they're the most time efficient or they're going to give me the best rewards that I want immediately. This time around, you only have four. So if you have a calling to do four will quests, your choice is either to simply not do them that day or wait until the next couple of days and do them then or do one that day and maybe a couple more the next days and hope for something better to come along. I'm sure many of you have heard the rumors about the Flappy Bird world quest. I unfortunately have not been able to do it. What does all this mean then? Why are we doing world quests? Why are we upgrading our sanctum? Well, that's at your leisure. Now, there are a couple of things that are tied to player power. However, Blizzard has been pretty good this time around about not wanting you to be endlessly farming. Instead, what they've done is made it so that there is a huge amount of things to do, but they're lengthy, they take time, and they're all for personal goals rather than just your character getting stronger. Sure, calling quests will have some gear associated to them. The tooltip says they will. Right now they don't, but the likelihood is you will get the same sort of thing that you get in Emissaries, which is a big weapon, something along those lines. But at the moment, they don't drop anything. But that probably still will return that if you have alts and you want to get some gear, not necessarily quick gear, bearing in mind on what I just said, 
emissaries or callings should be a source for that. What they are is a source of reputation. Now, reputation grinding is a little iffy in the Shadowlands. The world quests themselves don't reward too much. The calling quests reward you a little bit more, but you also have other sources of rep gain, including daily heroics and daily normal dungeons. These are going to be found in Oribos. They will give you the two daily dungeons that you can go and do for that day, and they will give you a straight-up big rep token for any faction you choose. They give you a choice of which one you want to do. So that's going to be something else you want to do. Why do you want rep? It's a good question. Well, there are some conduits and there are some recipes on top of the vendors. But they're honoured. That means there's no exalted grind straight out the gate. Now, Pathfinder is probably going to require you to get them eventually, but it's of no rush. And this is the important thing. This isn't a mandatory thing. It's not going to be like BFA where you logged in and you had to get exalted or whatever ASAP. As far as I can tell, and I want to say this very clearly, as far as I can tell... Beyond doing your weekly Torghast quick runs, which will give you your legendary Soul Ash, we're going to come back to that in a second, and getting your Renown for the week, which is weekly capped, by the way. You can't farm Renown, and this is what's going to upgrade your Soul Binds. There's not actually that much power grind to do in the Shadowlands. Everything is designed around you wanting to do it whenever the hell you feel like doing it. And that's cool. That's so good. If you want to spend a day working on your Sanctum, upgrading your weekly event, depending on which Covenant you picked, that's your choice to do that. If you don't want to do that, you don't have to. You're not really missing out on anything, as this is not going to provide you with something that you need a catch-up mechanic for, or anything like that. It's going to be cosmetics, it's going to be extra resources, it's going to be more abominations if you're a Necrolord. It's all feeding into itself without directly meaning that you, you can't raid without it. So not very similar to what you have now with Visions, with getting the legendary cloak upgrade. Everybody wants those because it makes you it lets you use more corruptions. That's not what's happening this time around. This time around, the Covenants, Anima, all that stuff is linked in its own little bubble that you can go and take part in at your leisure. There are some things you're going to want to pick up, like getting honoured, which isn't going to be particularly difficult. But other than that, if you want the transmogs, if you want to get some more rep gains, if you want to farm some resources, if you want to build more abominations, take part in more Bastion weekly events, things like that, then you're going to go and do some farming. And farming has returned. This is another thing that hasn't been mentioned a lot, but farming is back and in a pretty big way. For example, the Necrolords rely on various resources, specifically one called Malleable Flesh. Malleable Flesh is just a drop. It's a world drop. You can get it from dungeons, you can get it from doing world quests, you can get it from killing mobs. It comes from all kinds of places. And every time you pick some up, that pushes you towards your weekly building an abomination. Why would you want to build an abomination? For fun. I'm serious. I'm deadly serious here. For fun. You want to build all the abominations because they're kind of funny. You want to dress them in silly hats. You want to add all kinds of accessories. Go ahead. You can farm it as much as you want. You can week one, push really, really hard and get all those things. It's going to depend a little bit on your Sanctum upgrades, but that is something that you can do. Does it make you stronger in a raid or anything like that? No. It just gives you the ability to make more funny abominations. They'll give you more will quests or weekly quests, I should say, so you can build more abominations. It's a system that just plays on itself. It's in its own little sandbox that you can go and have fun with, but don't feel yourself obligated to do it. It's going to be hard for some players to adjust initially, and similar to how it was in 8.3, where people were like, ah, I need to do every single world quest in this zone. And then they realized, actually, no, I don't need to do the rare world quest. It doesn't gain me that much to do that. I might take a little couple of days longer or something to get exalted, but I don't really want the exalted rewards anyway in a lot of cases. So it's really not a big deal. I can skip that quest. And that's what it's going to be like in the Shadowlands. Another minor change that has come back to the game is something that some people are going to be pissed off about. And you would think I would be, but I'm really not. And that is the return of lots of little minor buffs. These are temporary buffs that you're going to be able to add to your weapons and armor, things like that. Of course, we've got the usual consumables. We've got food, we've got flasks, we've got a whole variety of potions. Some of them actually work with these extra consumables. But on top of that, we've got things like sharpening stones returning uh, for both blunt weapons and sharp weapons. We now have weapon oils returning, so you can oil your weapon for an hour, giving you an extra little damage buff, an extra healing buff, things like that. Little bit crapper for the tanks, there are the leather patches returning, which give you two hour buffs to your feet, your hands and your chest, buffing your stamina by 50 each. That means you do need three of them every two hours if you want to keep the buff up all the time. And you're going to get these little buffs coming back. Why? A number of reasons, I think. One, to keep the professions more relevant. 
uh, so they can blacksmiths can make sharpening stones throughout the expansion and they'll be fine leather workers can make the patches and they'll be fine and they'll have something to make and generate make some money back into the auction house and another side of it is that probably because titan forging has gone a lot of guilds relied on being over geared to maintain steady progress that was the reason that originally this war forging system came in is a blizzard sold us that they had data that there were guilds that were stuck on a boss and they collected every single piece of gear. Now you're going to have a number of consumable items that you can throw onto your character to overpower it for the next piece of content, which is something you probably want to do. Now, for Mythic Raiders, of course, this is just going to be another mandatory thing, similar to Augment Runes that you're probably going to want during progress. It's a small price to pay, in my opinion, for keeping the profession systems relevant throughout the entire expansion. That's something you want to do. Let's move on to something else then. The Maw. I imagine you've seen really little, if any, footage of the Maw. What is the Maw? The Maw's a big deal, apparently. The Maw is the end game zone. It is the big fifth zone of this expansion, and it is unfinished massively, I think. Hard to tell. The reason you haven't seen any footage, probably, or most people deep diving the Maw, is the Maw sucks. There's not really any other way for me to put it right now. It feels like it's an idea that's going to be expanded on over the course of the expansion. Right now, I can tell you what the Maw is supposed to be. The Maw is supposed to be where the Jail lives. This is the big end zone. You are the Maw Walker. You are very special because you can travel to the Maw and back again. No one else in the Shadowlands can do that. And it's also the place where the Eye of the Jailer watches over you. Uh, what does that mean? It means the more time you spend there, and you can probably remember this from BlizzCon as a big selling point, the more time you spend there, the more the Jailer notices you. And he's going to get more and more pissed off that you are in the Maw. You're not supposed to be there. This is his place. This is where he tortures souls. This is where he's doing all these horrible things, yet you're running around and killing his friends. What does this mean? Well, in the Maw, you can't mount, which is a big frustration still to this day. And... It's not that very scary. It's supposed to be scary. You're supposed to be like, I can only spend a little bit of time here before I have to leave because it's going to overwhelm me. In reality, there's a system called the Eye of the Jailer. And the Eye of the Jailer just kind of fills up as you do things in the Maw. As you collect souls to be saved and bring them from the Maw, the Eye will fill up. And then it has five levels. So it takes a little bit of time to get level one and so on and so forth until you get level five where eventually the Jailer will just straight up kill you. Now, what's wrong with the Maw, then? Why are people not playing it? Well, there's nothing much to do there. It's really, really boring. Uh, it's not scary. Uh, the affixes that the Jailer applies to you don't really matter until he eventually kills you at level 5, so you kind of ignore that mechanic. And the way they're doing it is that you're supposed to get upgrades over time. With the You get a resource called Stygia, which is a resource that you can buy things from a vendor that lives in the Maw to enable you to see things in the Maw, such as where the quests are. I'm not joking. When you go to the Maw, you're just going to be in a zone that has seemingly nothing in it. And you're going to wander around. Now, occasionally, as you're wandering around, a quest will pop up. And it'll be like, there's a quest, and the reward is Stygia. And you're like, okay. Do the quest. I the jailer fills up. Wander around a bit more. Fight some enemies. And find some rares. And that's kind of it. It's It feels woefully unfinished. And I kind of feel it's going to go live that way and be developed over time. I think maybe they've run out of time on it. It's hard to tell whether this is what they intended and it's just not worked. But it's not fun. Why do you need to go to the mall? That's probably the next question is why do you need to go to the mall? Just for the Sanctum upgrades, like many things, like I just said, there's only a couple of things you need to do weekly for player power that you kind of want to keep on top on. This is for Sanctum upgrades. Rescuing the souls from the Maw, you'll find them trapped in cages and things like that. Rescuing those souls, that's what's going to allow you to, they, they turn into a currency that you use to upgrade your Sanctum. So upgrading your Sanctum gives you more world quests, it makes your mission table better, and it upgrades the things you can do with your weekly event, depending on your covenant. So... If you're not particularly interested in doing that stuff, there's not much reason to go to the Maw. And of all the things in the Shadowlands, which look great, like the Covenant stuff does look really cool, the Maw is the one that stands out as not really sure what's supposed to be happening here. It's really not clear. And I sound confused. Now, I want to bear in mind, I've been playing this for months. I'm still not really sure what's supposed to be happening in the Maw. Seemingly not many people, are the, uh, many other people are either. It's a little confusing. Again, it feels unfinished. It feels like they still want to throw time at it. So maybe over the next 
few weeks we'll see something happening with the moor. But right now, it's just a barren, empty, non-threatening wasteland with not much happening in it. I'm sorry. For those of you who are looking forward to doing a lot of Covenant upgrades, you're probably going to need to spend quite a bit of time in the moor rescuing souls and things like that. And that could get frustrating because it's not particularly fun. But who am I to say what's fun? You guys can figure that all out by yourself. Lastly, let's talk about legendaries because there's been some confusion as to how this system works and a lot of data mining going along with it. Well, the legendary system is pretty simple actually and they've expanded upon it this week. There are lots and lots of legendaries coming for your character in the Shadowlands. Not all of them are great, obviously, with so many options there's bound to be ones that are better than others. There are some that are very specific, so there are some legendaries that are for the Maw. They give you advantages while you're in the Maw, they allow you to do extra things. There are some that are for Torghast. So you, you wear this legendary inside Torghast and you can, you know, get some benefits inside Torghast. Torghast. A lot of them are generic and not a lot of them are doing something very special. Some people got some good ones, some people didn't. That's the nature of the game. Now, how do they work? Well, <laughs> so some people are a little afraid of this. The way legendaries work is, of course, they are crafted by the rune carver. They've added some nice cutscenes and stuff to this guy. But essentially, you're going to look for a crafter or go to the auction house or you can craft it yourself. But you're going to craft essentially a base item. It has no stats, it has nothing on it, it's just a helmet. It'll be like Shadow Ghast Helmet. Something along those lines. So this you can literally just purchase off the AH if you want to. And it will have an item level, okay? Now, this item level can vary because as the crafters craft more of these things, they're going to, going to unlock things like rank 2 and then rank 3. And that means they're going to get better base item level of that legend of that base item okay so once you take that base item you're going to add some things to it one you need to find your legendary recipe wherever that might be right now they drop in dungeons they come from vendors things like that so looking for your recipe you will then put that into your recipe book you have that recipe you can do whatever you want with it then you're going to need to pick up a couple of the scrolls which are used to apply the stats so right now for any really good items in the shadowlands you can choose what stats you want on it they're called missives and they come there's very very simple guys missive of haste missive of crit missive of mastery missive of versatility etc so you're going to pick up a couple of those you can apply two stats to every legendary item so you're going to have a base item you're going to have a couple of missives for the stats you want you're going to have the recipe for the legend you need and then you're going to need the legendary resource soul ash soul ash comes from torghast and the way you get soul ash is that every week there will be two of the wings open inside torghast along with the endless but the endless and we confirmed this today does not provide soul ash it's purely for cosmetics so we can relax there what you do have is these two of the six themes of torghast and they're very short six levels that's it can be done in a few minutes running through that will reward you with some soul ash so once you've got your soul ash your recipe your base item and the missives you want you'll then go to see the rune carver he will then ask you to put in your items so what you'll do is you'll take your base item and put it in there you will then get a list of things that can be put on that item not every affix can be put on every item there are certain legendary effects that can only be put on helmets certain that can only be put on rings necklaces whatever it might be then you will apply the two resource uh, the two stats you want to put on it and then you'll say craft and then he will craft you the legendary there you have it and the item level of that legendary will be whatever the base item was that means as more base item levels are discovered by crafters and things, you might think to yourself, crap, I've got the low item level legendary. Do I need to craft it again? No, they have put in an upgrade system so you can simply keep upgrading the same item over and over. This is a very, very simple process. What Blizzard clearly do not want you to do is to log in week one of the Shadowlands, get your best recipe or whatever it might be, craft it week one and then that item is done for the remainder of the expansion that would be really boring for everybody concerned so what they've done is created this system so you can either wait if you want if you want to be patient and wait for the crafters to unlock the higher item level version then you only need to craft one time and it'll already be the highest item level available of course higher item levels will come as the game progresses and more patches come out or you can build your first one because you need it quickly either you're very into end game content so you want your legendary asap you'll get that built at the lower item level and just upgrade it as you get more resources over time very very simple process very cool very fun really like that we're building up a nice selection of legendaries that we can mess around with in different environments i really love that they've given us the option of say here's one for the mall you guys struggling in the mall build a legendary for it we're going to make that pretty easily and accessible and that might help you with your covenant sanctum upgrades if that's what you're focused on and you're not focused on say pv raiding or pvp don't bother with those bother with the things you do care about and make that work so that's really cool addition as well 
So overall, there's a number of little things, from the flight whistle, to little consumables, to how legendaries work, to how your covenant works, to how your endgame's gonna work, that are all rolled into one. Those are all the little things that don't deserve their own video, but they're a good idea. And of course, the more. So thank you very much for listening. I'm hoping, I know many of you people are asking, is, uh... I know many people are asking, is, is the game going to be ready? I hope so. Uh, I hope so. I have, of course, I'm pessimistic right now. You guys know that. I'm very pessimistic about how this is going. There are some things that definitely worry me, such as we didn't do any raid testing with actual powered characters that are using all the available options to us that are coming in the Shadowlands. So I guess they're trying to guess uh, where the power levels are going to be for certain characters or they're pulling that data from somewhere else and trying to figure it out. I wish them the best. Obviously, I do not want a bad launch of the expansion so I can sit here going, hmm, told you. I want a good expansion. That's what we're all after. And so far, uh, they're on a time limit. I hope they get it right. Uh, we'll see what happens on that one. But needless to say, October 27th, the stream will be up and we will be leveling together throughout the night. I'll see you again. Bye-bye.